Three years earlier in Moscow, Boris Yeltsin addressed a crowd from a T-72 tank. The Russian president stopped a putsch attempt by neo-communists. It would be his job to build the new liberal Russia the Western democracies wanted. Through a lack of maintenance and funding, the Russian oil industry is in a pitiful state. The new president needs money to save the country from ruin. Anatoly Chubais, an ambitious young minister, provided a solution. His idea was simple, to privatize the oil companies. Fresh from university, not yet 30 years old, they have run businesses and started banks with no fear or doubt. Berezovsky, Abramovich, Khodorkovsky. A dozen or so man who seized the privatized companies for a pittance. In all the 90s, Throughout the 90s, Russia belonged to the oligarchs. For totally derisory prices, these young guys found themselves owners of a certain number of prime oil assets in Russia. These oligarchs cornered the oil market, and there was such a degree of osmosis between them and Boris Yeltsin's entourage at the Kremlin that they were basically running the country. The seven sisters flocked to a new El Dorado and were welcomed with open arms. Russian oil needed technology and investments, and the new young owners needed dollars. The Russian oil fields were for sale, and the majors needed to buy. Everybody thought the right answer for getting the Russian petroleum sector back on its feet, because it had been struggling, was to get Western companies in, Western technologies, Western finance, all of that managerial skill, put it to work, and build up the Russian petroleum sector. In order to do that, uh, these, these, basically these petro-oligarchs were created as the counterpart, the vis-a-vis -vis for the... Western but in Moscow, power was changing hands. A new Tsar was enthroned, a former KGB colonel by the name of Vladimir Putin. He too needed oil revenues to finance greater Russian renewal and reinforce its international influence. There was no question of letting the oil flow away unheeded. Well, Putin moving into the Kremlin and realizing that the oligarchs ran the Kremlin, he didn't and he set about changing the balance of power. He basically had to find somebody that he was going to use to uh, make the example amongst the oligarchs that you are allowed to run your businesses, you're allowed to be billionaires, but you will not fiddle around in Russian politics. And Khodorkovsky crossed the line. In October 2003, Mikhail Khodorkovsky, the all-powerful president of Yukos, Russia's biggest oil company, was arrested. On May 31st, 2005, the young billionaire was sentenced to nine years in prison for fraud at a mockery of a trial. I think Khodorkovsky had a couple of things going. One was that there was talk of uh, Yukos uh, getting into a relationship with Exxon Mobil, Exxon, and uh, that that struck Putin as a step too far also. We are not going to have Western companies owning uh, majority positions in uh, Russian oil companies. We are going to control this as a state. I think Putin believed that for him to have the resources he needed to survive as the, as the president of Russia, he needed both oil and gas revenues to the extent he could accumulate them. И госчиновник даже самого высокого ранга, рядовой гражданин, средний предприниматель, крупный бизнесмен. Вне зависимости от того, сколько миллиардов долларов числится на его личных или корпоративных счетах. Кордаковский, Путин's personal enemy, was tried again. On December 30th, 2010, the oligarch was sentenced to 14 years imprisonment for embezzlement and money laundering. Russian oil regained its rightful place in the new Tsar's coffers. Putin did bring order. In the first phases of his reassertion of the Kremlin, 
He brought order to oil and he brought order to gas. And he made it clear Russia has too much interest in these two commodities to let them be handled and, and frittered away. We want the, uh, we want the control of that here in the Kremlin.